I'm going to pick the head that's got the untouched seat in it, which is, uh, this is the exhaust that I never touched, the one I had to put the guide in. Oh, and by the way, I'll say it out loud, um, when the other night when I was honing a home from this side of the head, turned it around and hit the other, I didn't hit the same hole. That ain't what I was trying to show you. What I was trying to show you was that you have to rotate the head around and hit one side, then hit the other and in order to keep it straight, that you're removing the material here equally on the other side because the stone does create a taper. And that tool that I showed you, that little black tool, I have to do it every couple of holes to keep it straight. So, once again, thank you readers or viewers for catching me on that. Still, the point's the same and rotating. Anyway, that out of the way, we're going to start here. Here is the seat position, okay, off this head. It's got the gray line on it. Here's the seat position here. I just wanted to show you that. And this is, I snapped it at the top point where it'll barely get through, okay? Look, where I've done the 60, it already opened it up about 30 thousandths or so. Uh, on this right here, I'm going to bring you in on a close view. I've already scribed the lines with my little scribing tool. It's really hard for you to see this. I can see it with my eyes, but the line is right at the end of this tip. That's going to be, I can give you an exact measurement on it, but I've already scribed all the lines on the intake and exhaust. It takes about an hour to go in there and do that once you get the math calculated, but it's right here. So from uh, the edge of the 45 degree seat to the beginning of the line is, let me see, 90 thousandths. So I've got Ninety thousandths of seat of width of the um, seventy degree angle from the edge of the seat in where I begin the cut. So I just wanted to go over that. Like I said, I just you, you can't see the line, but I can. Maybe you can. I don't know. I have to wait and see what I got. Let me see. I'm looking through the viewfinder right now, and. There's the line. There's the gray line. That's my seat. The little line is right there, 70 thousandths. So I'm going to totally conform this and pull all that out because the size hole that the exhaust is seeing is a 1.300 diameter. That's 300 thousandths less than the 160. So you can see my concern here with, uh, like on this one right here on this port, which amazingly enough, the seat, which would be somewhere in here, has got some kind of radius, but it just chops the whole size. We've got to get that open up in order to make the 160 a viable valve to be able to exhaust the gases. So, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, start the process. I'll show you now the weapon of choice this time. Decided to use uh, is, a, is a smaller flame. Some a hair above three eighths, around four hundred and ten thousandths width, is this flame. And I'm going to go in here because I'm only going to pull from here to there because the bowl starts to open right back up. Wow! Hold on a minute. Light switch. The light switch was right beside of it and blacked us out. But uh, anyway, like I said, the line's already scribed, and my choice of weapon this time is a flame. Uh, just undid, it's one of my last new ones that Mr. Joe Farina done for me. I miss him, he cut me the best, him and Elmore cut me the best carbides on the planet. Kind of sentimental, that's the last new one I had. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm doing. I'm going to come in. I'm going to go probably about an inch and a half up the bowl because everything up through here is done. It's like, you know, they went in there and done the valve job and, and forgot the most important part, the transition of the bowl. So let me get it started. I'm going to let you watch me and see how I go in there and carve it up and set it up. Slide them up.
Wow, right there, you can see where I'm pulling into the hardened seat now. Let me see if I can get you a shot of that. All right, this is what I'm talking about right here. Hey, I think you can see it. You see where the, uh, the the gray is the seat. You can see my scribe line, how close I'm getting to it. But look at this shiny part right there. That is the hardened stellite seat that was put in the head. So it's it's uh, touches that, and then I go in there and grind blend it. Now using the belly, what it does is because of the shape of this cutter being a flame, when I dig into it, it's gonna from from here back, it's gonna have a like a round radius blend coming off of it, which that really kicks the numbers pretty good. So like I said, you can see the hardened seat and the line. And notice how it's kind of uniform all the way around. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and continue on there, but I'm gonna turn the head the other direction because we're gonna have to rotate the head to get the short turn side and pull it up, and then we can take our measurements and see what kind of damage we done. All right, now we're on the short turn side. What a tremendous amount right there. I mean, that's a that's a pretty big ski jump, even by my standards. So let's try to pull her in. Notice that I'm using the belly part right here to start the digging because you got to really watch it. You don't want to go too crazy right here. The exhaust will bust through really quick. Just a slow transition, mainly what I try to keep it is straight along the guide when I'm doing the first cut. Then I come on over the top. There's that seat coming through. I might add that whenever I'm resetting the bowls, this is a double cross cut, not coarse, because you can't have it too coarse because it, it starts the bumping. This is as heavy of a cross cut, like I said, it's called a double cross cut. If you try to use anything more aggressive, you can't control the die grinder. And when you're getting in here on these lines, man, you got to see, look how, look how good that's gripping hold of it.
Alrighty then. That is what we're looking for. Alright, let's turn around and take a look and I'm going to give you a straight in shot of a true 160 bow versus the one that was done with the valve job and whatever radius cutter that they used. And we're going to do some measuring. Okay.